Two small SUVs, a gentle breeze, lots of trees. I'm setting the scene for your next adventure with two special off-road trims of some popular small SUVs. 2022 Jeep Compass Trailhawk, which is a refresh, and the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport First Edition, which by the name, you know, it's all new. Now, compared to the regular versions of these cars, they've got raised clearance, upgraded all-wheel drive systems, and they got a lot more attitude, at least how they look. But they also cost a whole lot more. They're in the 30s, even the 40s. Jeep Ford. If you subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel, and you should, you'll know that I already did a Jeep Ford comparison test. That was the Wrangler versus the Big Bronco. Now those cars, they're way more expensive, they use way more gas, and they're really hardcore. They're meant for the worst terrain. Consider this Jeep Ford comparison test as a compromise between all-out off-road capability and on-road comfort. So let's go. Both these vehicles are distinctive. The Compass has the seven-slot grille and the U-shaped fenders. That identifies it as a Jeep. The Bronco Sport kind of looks like a 1960s Bronco with the circular headlights, these horizontal LEDs, and the all-Bronco caps. Looks like no other Ford that I can remember except maybe the early 2000s Ford Escape. That was very blocky. Compared to the way the Escape looks now, it's very curvy. So the Bronco Sport is really taking that new position as an entry-level crossover that looks just more truck-like. All these edges, hard creases, kind of reminds me of the Ford F-150. It's very flat and angular, very planar. When you look at the Jeep, it's almost car-like. It's so smooth and curvaceous compared to this Bronco Sport. But both of them have very short overhangs. They've got raised suspensions, all-terrain tires, exposed tow hooks, steel skid plates, all the stuff you need for some light trail work. Let's talk some numbers, Jeep versus Ford. Ground clearance, 8.6 inches for both. However, if you equip the Bronco Sport with some optional all-terrain tires, in addition to the ones it already has, you get two extra tents, which is what this one has. That's pretty much a wash, so let's leave it at that. Water fording, how much water can you go through? 19 inches high on the Jeep, 23.6 on the Bronco Sport. It's pretty impressive. Angles. We all know we need the right angles. They're both pretty similar, but as you can see above, the Jeep really wins on the breakover and on the departure angles. Also, horsepower. 180 on the Jeep, 250 on the Bronco Sport. This is a two-liter turbo. We'll get to that later. And driving. The off-road modes. There's four off-road modes and a four-wheel drive low, which is pretty impressive in this segment. Now, the Ford doesn't have a low, but it has a locking rear diff, and it has seven driving modes. So how do all these modes work when you're actually driving? I'm glad you asked. What I recognize first about the Compass is that it's a car to start, and that means that it rides well, and it's pretty quiet in here. I am honestly impressed with the fact that this is so serene a ride given these are all-terrain tires. Part of that though, even though they're both Falcon Wild Peak tires, the Bronco uses the AT designation, the Jeep has the HT, and that's more for a highway. I don't know all the differences in tire tread design, but what they're doing there does make a difference. So you have the all-terrain capability, but just a little quieter, smoother ride. And I can definitely feel that. The Bronco definitely feels noisier. Not a ton, but enough to you know make you perk up and be like, hey, is a window open? It's not. It's just the Jeep is that much quieter. It really is really refined. I like that part of it. Now, it's quiet until you actually have to you know, accelerate and then it's, whoa, <laughs> when it decides to drop down some gears, it is noisy, it is gritty, it's pretty harsh. Engines don't really sound like that anymore and this is an old Fiat engine. You have to remember this goes back way, way back, well before 2017 when this Compass was new, but the age is really showing. It wasn't that good then and it's pretty bad now. There's just, there's just nothing. It makes a lot of noise, but no momentum of any kind. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to pass, if you're just trying to get on the highway, take caution because this is like the Jeeps of old. You know, I've been in new Wranglers that scoot like nothing. It's no problem. But in this compass, you're fighting for every mile an hour. What does help this engine somewhat if you order the Trailhawk or a lot of the other upper trims is the nine speed automatic. If you don't, on the Sport and Latitude, those are the first two trims, six-speed automatic. Not too many vehicles use that anymore. Mazda's still doing it. Again, it seems like it'd be okay, but the gear ratios, there's a lot less of them. There's more gaps between them, which means that 
the little power that this engine generates is even worse. So I haven't driven that, have no interest in doing it. I would recommend you guys at least get the Latitude, Lux, and all those other trims just so you can have a better experience with this vehicle, but it does not compare to the eight-speed automatic in that Bronco Sport. And when it comes down to just torque, moving, feeling, <laughs> Bronco Sport's better in every direction. It truly is. It's like a night and day thing. And even if we didn't have that two liter that's on that first edition in the Badlands, the one and a half liter turbo would beat the figures in this vehicle without a turbo. So there's really no comparison between the powertrains. The Bronco Sport is way ahead of this Jeep. Steering is also kind of numb. It feels a little disconnected at these lower speeds and just I'm moving the wheel like this, nothing really happens. However, the braking is quite good and it definitely matches the Bronco Sport. In some ways it might even better it. It's just really smooth and direct. But despite putting up with this engine's harshness and lack of power, it actually has better fuel economy than the Bronco Sport. 22 city, 30 highway, and 25 combined. So despite it being an old rackety engine that really doesn't like to work very hard, I know some people that are like that, it actually does contribute well to your wallet. But you just gotta listen to it all the time. And that's not something I'm really prepared to do. Why you buy a Compass Trailhawk or that Bronco Sport is trying to drive on a trail, pretending that you do. I'm not gonna do anything hardcore, so please do not complain that I'm only driving on leaves and a little twigs, because that's all it is right now. These vehicles are really just meant for like trail light, right? You can go into the woods and come out feeling okay. Not much effort. The difference is, is that this vehicle right here has a rock mode, which is a exclusive mode to the Trailhawk versus the other Compass models with that select terrain system. So I can stop here and activate it or go on the fly, but I'll just stop so I can see what I'm doing. Snow, sand, mud, maybe it's sand, mud. We'll do that. The difference being is that versus other all-wheel drive systems, this will actually lock the four-wheel drive front and rear 50%, and it has a low range, very few. I don't even know any other crossovers that have that. The Bronco Sport doesn't. So when you do that, shift to neutral, drive, has a 20 to one crawl ratio, which is pretty significant for a regular crossover. Not gonna find that in the CRV or anything else like it. Gotta say the low range doesn't do a ton. Again, that ratio isn't huge, but it's nice that it's there. And I can easily go out of it, go back into high. And it's shifting for me, it does everything. So that's kind of cool. Not really necessary. It's nothing you couldn't do already with a Subaru Forester or a lot of other things, but when the going gets tough, I at least feel that Jeep, knowing who they are, they're gonna do it right. Wow, right off the bat, I just feel it. I feel everything and just tons of power coming on right away. It's always on the boil, wow. Woohoo. This feels like a Mustang next to that Jeep, but it's a Bronco Sport because it has a two liter turbo four, the EcoBoost engine, like in so many Ford cars and trucks. Here it makes 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. It might as well be on another country away than that Jeep Compass engine. My goodness. If this is what a modern engine does, I don't know what that Jeep is supposed to represent. The ancient Mayan civilization, I, it's about as far back as it goes. Sport truly is part of the Bronco Sports name and I'm not even in sport mode. It just kicks up and goes and it feels like I'm in a car despite this gigantic hood, which by the way looks much bigger from behind the wheel than it does from outside. But wow, and the steering is so much more direct. I still don't feel any roll despite this being lifted and everything like that, wow. Brakes also feel good. A little bit more dive in the Jeep, but not much. So the two liter engine is exclusive to the Badlands and this first edition, which as you know, is only for 2021. So going forward, the 2022 with the Badlands has this engine. All the other Bronco Sport models have a one and a half liter turbo, and that makes 181 horsepower and 190 pound feet. And those figures are still better than that 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four in the Jeep. 
So progress comes pretty strong in this car, and I gotta say, I like that two liter. I haven't driven in the one and a half, but if you can spring for this extra, extra power, wow, it just makes such a big difference. You do pay a fuel penalty for this engine. It's 21 city, 26 highway, and 23 combined. That's not good by any measure, but that's what you're getting here. Higher horsepower, higher torque, more capability, but the Jeep beats it. That engine's really a piece of junk, but wow, it, you know, it does save you money overall. I will say that. All wheel drive is standard on every Bronco Sport, whereas with the Jeep Compass, front wheel drive is on the baser trims and the four wheel drive is optional. Now, jumping between four and all wheel drive, this is not really a true four wheel drive system like on the big Bronco. However, you can lock the torque 50-50 to always have it there. And it also has a version of a mechanically locking differential. It's not what it is. There's some special twin clutch plate design and that back axle. I'm not gonna explain it here, but it works very much the same. So you can have that uh, extra grip and power out of some bad turns. That's what you use it for off-road. Now, a higher speeds, I'm only doing 55 miles an hour. The wind noise and the tire noise do come through and the blocky design of this vehicle, I can also hear it. Versus the Jeep, it's notably louder. Not horrible, but you pay for this design and these tires and all of that. Whereas the Jeep just feels so much more car-like. I am reminded that I'm in a truck. Kind of nice though. Kind of like an SUV actually being an SUV and not just being a copycat or trying to be a poser. The Bronco Sport does seem pretty legit and I'm not doing any hardcore driving on these trails. Don't have any right now. The weather is beautiful, thank goodness. So if you buy one of these and you have put it to the test, let us know. Definitely want to know more. But in everyday driving like I'm doing right now, you're sacrificing some comfort. You are. And the ride is good. The ride is otherwise fine. And these seats are really nice. Wow, these seats are definitely better than the Jeep. Not by much, but just a little bit. And they also look nicer. See all that blue and the gray? Ooh. Really blends in with my jacket right now. I buy it just for that. For a vehicle that's almost nine inches off the ground, it handles pretty well. There are seven driving modes if you order the Badlands. So that gets you two extra ones. So let's read them off, shall we? All right, I'm in normal mode. Mud ruts, sand, that's an exclusive one to the Badlands and so does rock crawl. That sounds kind of fun. And when I do that, it actually activates the front camera. It keeps it on at these low speeds so I can see anything in front. It's a little fuzzy right now, not very clear, I'm not gonna lie, but it's still nicer than having someone else walk in front of you. Now there's no low range like the Jeep, so you don't really get that extra crawl ratio, but as it stands, still pretty good. And remember, there's a lot more torque in this vehicle than that Jeep. So the Bronco Sport does not have to work as hard to get all these four wheels turning. You could leave the Bronco Sport and the Jeep in normal. The vehicles would sort it out. Only when you really need, say the four wheel drive lock, or the, in this, this case, the locking rear diff, then you can activate it yourself. But it's there to automatically do it for you. It shows some neat graphics. I can see the steering angle on here, have the incline I'm on, great. You know, that's really cool. Um, but kind of unnecessary because for the most part, you just kind of just drive and this vehicle's totally fine. It's totally in its element no matter which mode you're in. And if you're driving in a situation where you really need, say, a mud and ruts mode, well, you probably should take the big Bronco, not the Bronco Sport. It's surprisingly roomy in the Bronco Sport because there's an added height here in the roof. Fort calls it a safari style roof. That just means it's raised, just like a Land Rover. It gives me some more space. I wish there was a little sunroof here for more light, but not too bad for a compact SUV. There's also a lot of things to play with. I got pouches here. I can put script for this video here if I want, my phone and this side pouch. There's also these little Molly strips where you can attach and detach, clip all these gear you want. I got a 115 volt power outlet, air vents, 
the same nice silky texture here on these gray, I don't know what they're called, but they're nice. I like feeling them up. It's a nice place to sit. The Jeep has none of those things, but there's a nice big panoramic moonroof and it feels just as roomy back here. The seats are very comfortable. I've got air vents, USB ports, plus USB-C, which I don't even have yet on my phone. 115 volt power outlet back here, and you can get optional heated rear seats, which the Bronco Sport does not have. Cargo space is about the same for both vehicles. For the Bronco Sport, it's 29 cubic feet behind those rear seats and 60 when they're folded, 27 behind the Jeep and 60 when those are folded. Now, if you get the Bronco Sport on some different trims and engines, it can actually offer up to 65 cubes, but this one right here is 60. So in case you see discrepancies, that's why. The Bronco Sport also has some other cool features. If you come in here, there's these two lights. If it was really dark, it would really illuminate this space pretty nicely. This is all rubberized here, which is really nice. Even the backs of these seats. And in the Jeep, now well, it's got an optional mat here. And there's a cool little Jeep icon there. When you test drive these vehicles, you'll notice these little details on the car that you really have to spend time in person to see. A couple more things about these tailgates. The Compass has a power tailgate. This one does not. However, this has a split glass tailgate, which you hardly see anymore anywhere in the small segment. And there's a 115 volt power outlet in the back. The Jeep doesn't have that. Bronco Sport is like a mini Land Rover Defender. Everything's upright. It's pretty basic in here. It's all about utility. And of course, well, all these rubber floors and this kind of easy clean material, these rubbers, they're soft, that's nice. There's just some harder plastics here than you'll find in the Jeep. And that might sound surprising because Jeep products typically have been pretty plasticky, but the new 2022 Compass does beat that in overall refinement. The fit is overall pretty decent, but again, this is more of a truck feel, like a pickup truck, a little more rugged, a little more user-friendly for every day, but not as car-like. This is the first edition, which has the fancier navy blue leather and this gray kind of fabric, it feels really, really nice. It's got gray stitching as well. So these seats are really nice. But like the big Bronco, this isn't a really high-end interior, even for almost 40 grand. The screen is eight inches. There's a six and a half inch display in the instrument panel, but it's like being in a basic pickup truck. Sync 3 is not the newest Ford software. The big Bronco has Sync 4, and it's faster and better looking. This is okay, but it's not impressive. My car doesn't have it, but you can order the Bronco Sport with Copilot 360 Assist Plus. That's a mouthful. It is impressive, and it can steer the Bronco Sport around obstacles and work as a semi-automated system. Plus, there's a 10-speaker stereo by Bang & Olufsen. Jeep interiors typically have never been strong selling points, at least not for these smaller Jeeps. But the 2022 Compass has some major upgrades. The dash has great fit and finish, with a textured and stitched midsection, nice trim below, and slim air vents that are hidden in this top section. There's two 10-inch screens for the infotainment and the instrument panel. Overall, the Jeep has better fit and finish, which is not something you could say in the 2021 Compass. The only thing, I wish there were more color accents, like in the Bronco Sport. This is just very dark. Compared to the Ford's infotainment, Uconnect 5 is sharper and crisper looking on this screen. It's got more technology like wireless Apple CarPlay, but I wish the heated seat and the heated steering wheel controls were out of the screen. The digital instrument panel can be customized in many different views. Can't get that on the Bronco Sport, especially this carousel tile, which you can kind of scroll through, jump right to a certain menu, like the Apple CarPlay. However, compared to what you can get in the Ford, it doesn't really have a ton more functionality than what you're getting on that vehicle. More safety is standard for 2022, including lane keep assist. And later in the production year, you'll get highway assist as an option, which, like the Ford system, can semi-automate the car on marked highways. These are pricey little things. The Bronco Sport First Edition is $39,655. The Compass Trailhawk is $41,315. Really, their only competitors are the Subaru Outback Wilderness and the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road. You're buying these vehicles because you want more capability, but you don't want to sacrifice comfort or pay tens of thousands extra for a big Bronco or a big Jeep. They both offer a lot in a small package. I would take the interior and the technology of that Jeep and shove it in this Bronco Sport. That's the ideal combination but I can't have it. So you have to ask yourself, what do you want to do with these vehicles? To me, the Bronco Sport is more of a Jeep 
than that Jeep. It's more utilitarian. There's all places you can stuff your gear inside. It's got rubber flooring, a lot of accessories that people are going to find useful. The Jeep is really hampered by that engine. I don't think it compares well to a lot of other SUVs, certainly not this turbo engine in the Bronco Sport. And because of that, and because the Bronco Sport does so many other things really well, I would take this one. But off-road, you're going to find them both to be pretty comparable. The Jeep is not that far behind. So what do you guys think? Which car would you choose? And what cars do you want us to compare next? Well, keep watching and make sure you subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel because that's where we post these videos. And go to cargurus.com to read reviews and find your next car. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.